Hi, and welcome to another episode of Access Chat. We're delighted to have Heidel Madrid Sanchez with us today from Close Funding. It's great to have someone that's uh, a regular Access Chat attendee with us um, because we know that it's going to be fast and furious. Um, thank you for coming on. You've been a supporter from the beginning. I'm really interested to hear what you're doing with Close Funding, but also be really grateful for you telling us a bit more about the um, what's going on in Spain and, and, and the, the provision of equipment and the, the, the overall structure of inclusion and the atmosphere of inclusion in Spain, because I hear some really good things. Uh, I'm aware of uh, Onsay Foundation, which I believe you've uh, worked for in the past, um, but I, I'd really like to know how, what, what goes on, what the atmosphere is like, um, and, and what, leading on to that, what that's brought you into in terms of your, your newest venture. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for me to be, uh, it's a big pleasure to be here today uh, in Access Chat, okay, this is a very wonderful initiative on global accessibility. Uh, so coming come to, your, to your first question, um, uh, and I have to say that here in Spain, um, we, have, we have a very, we could consider very nice uh, context for uh, people with disability in general uh, uh, regarding employment, but uh, regarding activity rate of people with disability in Spain uh, is, uh, was above in 2014 above uh, 37%, but if we go in depth, uh, if we, we can find that just above 11% of these people are entrepreneurs or self-employed, employed against more than 88% that are working for organization as employees. So uh, we can see that the, of course, the amount of entrepreneurs with disabilities is much lower than entrepreneurs without, uh, uh, without disabilities. Uh, however, entrepreneurship is the only uh, labor uh, option that many people with disability have, and the creation of small businesses with, within the social economy uh, is a formula that uh, fits especially well uh, the needs of people with disabilities. However, um, we have also, also to say uh, regarding uh, entrepreneurship, uh, entre entrepreneurs with disabilities, that we have still a lot of stigmas, uh, perhaps access to education barriers of many people with disabilities, and insufficient entrepreneurship culture as well, okay, that somehow that affects to all the, the country. But also we have a very strong lack of personalized training and mentoring for people with disabilities. Um, I, ha I want to point out also that we have a, a very uh, important um, uh, asymmetric and insufficient support uh, of public administration. Uh, if we compare the funding and the support that public administration uh, uh, give to uh, uh, companies that are employing people with disabilities, however, the support and funding that public administration give to uh, entrepreneurs with disability, uh, disabilities is much lower. So that's a very important question because sometimes uh, people with a disability uh, prefer uh, going to, the, to a company uh, uh, than uh, uh, starting uh, his or her uh, own entrepreneurship. And that's very important. Uh, finally, uh, I also have to, to say that uh, uh, in the last uh, times, uh, the access to uh, technology uh, have uh, opened a lot of new opportunities to entrepreneurs, uh, you know, to, to, to access in equal conditions uh, with respect to uh, people without uh, disabilities here, uh, here in Spain. And I think in, uh, in all, in, in the, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in, every, in, in, in uh, everywhere as well, okay? So that's, uh, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Hi, Hi I, um, I personally, I, I think this is a very important topic, entrepreneurs with disabilities. And I know that you're not just working in Spain, that you're working with, um, I know that you and I have talked about uh, efforts that we need to make in the United States and you're working with other countries. Um, do you find that, because um, country, because uh, Spain has, really, really, as Neil was saying, they've done so much to support people with disabilities. They, they've just, they're such a best practice. But um, 
I've heard other people say that Spain, as well as other countries, are not as good about supporting entrepreneurs. As a matter of fact, Antonio happened to say that about Portugal as well. And so I'm curious if countries, if you're finding more support for entrepreneurs in general and entrepreneurs with disabilities, um, are, are some countries doing a better job of supporting those efforts? I know we're very entrepreneurial in the United States, but we have a lot of work to do with doing, I think, a better job of supporting entrepreneurs with disabilities. So I'm just curious from a country level, and I'm not as familiar with, Neil, what some of the, what you're doing in the UK, but I was just curious yeah. about that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I know some, uh, I know that uh, some uh, big efforts uh, have been done, uh, uh, for instance, in Canada uh, to adapt some uh, uh, tools uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, financial tools, um, man uh, uh, communication tools as well uh, for entrepreneurs. I have seen uh, some, you know, uh, important conference uh, or presentations, but um, really I don't know exactly the, the uh, you know, the uh, the contribution of uh, public administration, especially uh, for this kind of entrepreneurs, uh, I'm much more focused on in uh, on Spain and South America. I, I know in South America the the uh, the help is uh, okay is uh, growing in the last years, especially in Colombia, uh, Chile, especially Chile and Mexico, because they are developing very active uh, startup ecosystems. And they are including as well, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, uh, are including as well uh, people with disabilities. But, uh, but uh, these are uh, initiatives uh, in just the, the last two, three years, okay, in Latin America, uh, here in Spain. I don't know, I, I know in Canada, we have uh, a lot of activity uh, in general uh, around innovation and uh, disabilities. But I don't, I don't know exactly in, in other pa uh, parts, uh, perhaps in, in Europe or, or I, uh, abroad. Okay. I, I can give a bit of background in the UK. Yeah. Uh, okay. Certainly, the, the Access to Work scheme allows people with disabilities who are self-employed to put together a business plan and get uh, the same, actually slightly more funding than uh, they would if they were employed because mm -hmm. larger businesses actually have to contribute, whereas if you're a small business and a startup, um, mm -hmm. the, the funding can be up to 100% of the costs of the uh -huh. tech and some of the training. However, yeah. you've got to get to the point where you already have a business plan in order to get yeah. the, um, to convince the, the, the funders that you have a viable business and therefore you need the, yeah. the equipment to, to do it. So it's chicken and egg. That the funding yeah. is there, but the the ecosystem to nurture people with disabilities to take that first step is not. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think that's, yeah, that's very important. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, in, uh, in fact, is my uh, my my uh, the, the direct contribution in, uh, of close to funding is uh, to uh, go uh, with this uh, first these early stages of your project. Even before that, you are uh, you have uh, funding or you have you know uh, your pitching to present to your investors. So because sometimes we are all the time we are we uh, we uh, we have the Silicon Valley fever, and we have to take into account that uh, people with disabilities and uh, in general entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs they uh, need uh, even more early early stage uh, tools. To design and to engage more uh, their communities to create more sustainable uh, strategies, even uh, that uh, even uh, strategies that are less dependent of public funding and uh, even uh, uh, private investors. Okay, because uh, the the first two years, perhaps you are not going to have a lot of uh, private money for, in your project, but you need to get to arrive uh, to a sustainability uh, stage. So you have to use a lot of, uh, you can use a lot of strategies and tools. So we are, you know, we are promoting the use uh, the, the, uh, to, to have more, uh, e more uh, easier uh, tools uh, to design uh, business models. But uh, even uh, at, the, at the very beginning or even before 
example of having any kind of uh, public funding or private funding you know it's very important because here in spain we don't have any more uh, public funding for entrepreneurs we are very dramatic situation we have more than 50 percent uh, unemployment jo uh, youth rate it's that, that's huge yeah so exactly. most of the of entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs by force you know yeah they are they are not opportunity entrepreneurs by opportunity entrepreneurs so they have they need to uh enter to to start entrepreneurship because they need to live yeah you need to live so they they need to uh to uh to uh acquire skills to uh you know to uh, to define around his passion uh, and purpose uh, to build new projects that are more uh, viable and sustainable. And for this reason as well, in close funding, we uh, put focus uh, on uh, the local, uh, in the local level, because the local level is a very, is a nice point, an excellent point to start a project and to uh, achieve uh, sustainability, okay? So, and then, and then you can scale. You can have a replicable model. You can have a private, a private uh, funding, and you can have more uh, national uh, funding. And, but we are even uh, before. We are uh, at the at the very beginning. Okay, it's very important. You you are describing the situation in the south of Spain that is 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 well very well known for for a couple of years. Uh, quite quite uh, recently, just a few, a few days ago. The European Commission was claiming that now only one, uh, one uh, almost two percent of the European enterprises make full uh, advantage of uh, digital technologies, mobile web, cloud computing, social networks, and and big data. Yeah. We also know that in the south of Europe, some of the business they are even behind, you know, uh, in, in the adoption of these technologies. How yeah. can people with disabilities can get some can receive training and be part of the solution and they can actually support existing business and make uh, some some revenue for themselves how can, can they be part of this solution here yeah yeah this is very uh, important uh, yeah in fact one of the tools that we are developing is business for all uh, is a, a augmented uh, uh, business communication tool so i have applied cognitive and uh, principles to the design of business models so that's very original because uh, we have uh, picture-based business models. So you can imagine uh, this is not just for people with disability, just for, also for people uh, like uh, social entrepreneurs, uh, especially that they don't know the options that you are talking about. They don't know the option about technology. They don't know the option about how can uh, engage their communities, how can uh, collaborate with their uh, partners, with uh, their uh, uh, you know, uh, the, with other companies or other entrepreneurs uh, in the in the local uh, area. So uh, we, uh, we have, uh, in fact, we, uh, we have created this kind of, of tools to uh, uh, to uh, to configure in an easier way uh, these kind of business models and to uh, explicitly uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to say to entrepreneurs uh, options that they have to uh, create new sustainable uh, business models. And in close funding, it's very important as well to that we have more than, uh, so far, we have more than uh, 300 uh, uh, business models, referent, referent business models from other uh, local uh, entrepreneurs that are, uh, that are achieving sustainability in other parts of, uh, the, of, the, of the planet. So with these references, and uh, with these uh, uh, accessible tools of uh, business model design, uh, for business model design, we are uh, training and we are giving uh, skills, uh, entrepreneurship skills to uh, entrepreneurs to understand in a better way and in an easier way, uh, you know, uh, this kind of solutions, technologies, cloud-based technologies, and especially business strategies. Okay, it's very, uh, that's very, uh, very uh, important because uh, I repeat, not just people with disabilities, because when we start entrepreneurship, we uh, have somehow a cognitive, a communicative uh, disability. We have a very, com a very disabling context. We have a lot of information. We have a, a very disconnected uh, business uh, uh, tools. We have, uh, 
you know a lack of uh, the, uh, a lack of uh, uh, you know of business model uh, tools uh, uh, adapted to social mission uh, projects. So we have a lot of complexity. We have a lot of diversity. So why not to use accessibility to manage all this diversity that we have uh, behind business model, uh, we have behind entrepreneurship communities to create, to build new uh, usable uh, business tools? That's the question, and that's the, 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 the main point of uh, close funding. How, to, uh, how can we uh, use accessibility to model uh, new tools uh, to, to create new tools, uh, to model uh, in an easier way business models, and to include accessibility by, accessibility by design within our business model uh, process. You know, it's very important. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, so that sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, really interested having put together small businesses previously and uh, um, put together business plans and everything else, I can appreciate how, how difficult it is. Uh, I did it when I was very young. It was overwhelming at the time. Yeah. Um, I think that obviously due to the economic situation that you're describing, people are forced into entrepreneurship, so they're not doing it necessarily willingly but out of necessity. So uh, all of these things that you're doing to make it less painful are, are, yeah. are, are well worthwhile because they're going to benefit so many people. Um, I'm guessing that most of these people are not trying to invent the next Tesla motor car. They're, they're, you're, you're looking at putting together sustainable small business models and, uh, yeah. and, and mainly around, uh, again, self-employment and, and, and single employment. So therefore, the, the amount of seed funding they're going to need is quite small. Because my, my other question was, how does close funding get its funding in order to, to do all of this work? Are you, are you um, charitable or, are you, or do you have some backing yeah. that are helping you? Yeah, we are in the first st uh, st uh, step of uh, close funding. We are, uh, we are developing these uh, assistive uh, business tools. Okay? Okay. And then in a second st uh, stage, uh, we are going to have uh, cl uh, crowdfunding mm -hmm. options for local awareness entrepreneurs, okay? okay? Because we want also that uh, uh, real needs of local people come again back to local projects, to entrepreneurship yeah. projects. Because sometimes we are more focused on something that is happening, I don't know, in Madrid, in this case, than that something that is happening in my own hometown. And perhaps I have a lot of opportunities here uh, in, a, in, in my local area. area. Uh, for instance, here in Mar Menor, we have a lot of opportunities about um, uh, accessible tourism. Okay, in fact, we are going to to have the first meetup, close funding meetup on accessible tourism, uh, not just for people with disability. We are speaking about elderly people, but also about families uh, with uh, children. Friend, you know, you know well that uh, accessible tourism is uh, is about comfort. Okay, about personalization of the tourism. So we have a lot of opportunities here about uh, accessible tourism. So we are promoting uh, ac uh, local entrepreneurs uh, to, uh, uh, to start projects uh, on, on these uh, 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 local opportunities instead of going abroad or going to Madrid or going to uh, you know, uh, further locations. So it's very, uh, very important. And then we, have, we will have these uh, crowdfunding options to uh, promote the, uh, the uh, contribution, economical contribution from uh, people uh, from the uh, local areas that are uh, in fact much more closer to the, to the projects. So it's going to be also easier to have money from this, uh, you know, for this kind of uh, crowdfunders because uh, they can see and they can touch a project and they can touch, uh, even they can meet an entrepreneurs, okay? C can you describe us the, the environment in, uh, in where your networking uh, happens? Do you have a space? Uh, um, wh where do you meet? And how can different entrepreneurs can communicate with each other? How can they uh, develop ideas and work together? 
Okay, uh, in this sense, uh, we are using as well the Business for All tool that is an online, online assistive uh, business tool. And uh, we are connecting, uh, uh, in this first stage, we are connecting different local entrepreneurs, uh, local entrepreneurs from different regions in Spain, from Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Castilla-La Mancha, Murcia. Uh, we, are, uh, we are connecting these uh, local entrepreneurs uh, to, you know, to, uh, to share knowledge and share insights about their projects. And then uh, yeah, the, uh, each local entrepreneur yeah, is going to uh, present uh, the results in uh, local meetups, okay? So we are using like a global approach okay. because we, we have to, we take into account glo global, uh, uh, globally local projects. It's very important because we uh, we are uh, we see best practices in a global level, but uh, best practices that are applying to local uh, to local level projects. So we are using business for all to connect online and to uh, design new business model and new strategies using these accessible environments. And then we have uh, local meetups in uh, public spaces. We are also doing some uh, doing. Uh, uh, the project is very related with uh, urban innovation as well because we are using uh, local uh, facilities that are uh, uh, are not uh, very uh, are, are not very busy are very uh, uh, infrastructure. So we are using these uh, facilities to have meetups and to have pop-up co-working spaces, okay, at, at local areas. And this is the first, uh, I, I, have, uh, uh, I, uh, I have said uh, you, is the first stage uh, of the project, okay? Okay. So I, I love the idea of the pop-up co-working. I, I yeah. think it's really important for people to have that support network around them of people that are going through the same kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's very important, the peer-to-peer entrepreneurship and we uh, promote as well uh, here uh, diverse, uh, meetups of diversity because we are mixing people with disabilities with people with, without disabilities. So yeah. we are normalizing, that's very important, we are normalizing relationships between entrepreneurs and we are uh, sharing interests, uh, we are sharing purposes, yeah. further disabilities or abilities or capabilities or whatever, okay? So it's very that, that's very important because here uh, we have a, a community of people with disability, entrepreneurs with disability, and uh, so far they were very ex uh, they, they were very uh, you know uh, excluded uh, from you know from innovation uh, meetups or innovation uh, you know innovation uh, yeah innovation uh, uh, this kind of innovation meetups yeah so it's very important this uh, normalization of the relationships between entrepreneurs with disabilities and without disabilities. Okay. It's very important. So, so that, that kind of ties into one of the other things I, I was curious about. I, as I said, I've heard lots of good stuff about, about Spain. One of the things I hear about quite a bit that's different from the UK model of dealing with disability is that there's often a lot of provision, but it's almost in a bubble. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, yes, yes. Um, whereas we've gone for a, a more integrationalist approach yeah. in the UK, um, which, which has worked to a certain extent. We're not without fault um, because the, the, the flip side of that is that we don't have the kind of um, strong um, targets and everything else set by government to, to integrate people because we're expected to do it by default. So is, is that something that you're trying to sort of break that cycle with what you're doing with yeah, those funds? Yeah. That for, for me it's crucial that it's the normalization of, of, uh, of you know, the relationship be, uh, between people with disability and, uh, and without disabilities, but also the use of accessibility um, not as a as a goal to cover the needs of people with disability, but as a strategy, as a as a strategy for uh, any kind of entrepreneur to improve the community experience of their project. That's very important. Here, I'm developing a new framework, business framework called Lean Inclusion. I, I think you uh, you know well Lean methodology. Yes, yes. Okay, they 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 are very transaction and economic based. Uh, tools, but uh, I'm introducing accessibility and inclusive factors 
uh, within this kind of tools, you know, to uh, popularize uh, these kind of uh, inclusive factors yes. uh, from the very beginning and to have uh, accessibility by design uh, in the uh, uh, in this uh, business model uh, design tools. So these tools uh, uh, are uh, are being uh, used by not just uh, people with disabilities or entrepreneurs with disability. They are uh, are being they uh, are being uh, used by uh, entrepreneurs without uh, disabilities, and they are recognized. They uh, they are recognizing. Uh, accessibility and inclus uh, inclusive factors and community factors and purpose-based factors that uh, nowadays are very important because you know well that nowadays projects uh, are not uh, any more technology oriented. Projects are value oriented. Projects are community oriented. Projects yeah. are uh, based on real needs and preferences. So we have, uh, you know, we have moved from the power market, we have moved uh, the power market from companies on solutions to consumers. So we have to adapt the, the tools that entrepreneurs uh, use. And here, accessibility experts, we have a very, I think, excellent opportunity to include uh, inclusive factors within the DNI of this kind of business tools. Okay, that's, that's essential. That's essential. Yeah, no, I think that's fascinating. I think it's absolutely the right yeah. approach. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. We, when we're when we're bringing on new tools and bringing on new projects, that's, that's the only time that we've we've got a real chance of doing it right. Okay, uh, but we are we have uh, achieved that people without disabilities and entrepreneurs with, yeah. without disabilities, even small business, they are using uh, business tools that are incorporating accessibility. Uh, regarding uh, customer experience, community experience, to develop the capacity of yes. hear more voices, even during my prototyping, uh, my minimum via viable product, you know, these kind of concepts that are very important, even from from the beginning, to to have the capacity of uh, hear more of hearing more voices. Okay, so it's important. Okay, so uh, uh, one more question, and I, I know Deborah's yeah. itching to ask again. Um, so. This, these tools are they methodologies or are they actually is it software that you've actually already got got developed? Because if it's if it's well, I'm interested in both actually because I think it's it's something that's quite aligned with what I'm doing. But um, have, have you actually so say using are they using your methodologies or are they using stuff that software that you've developed to then uh, build their businesses and, and include the stuff in the lean methodology and in the process. No, uh, okay. Uh, we are using in these meetups that we are celebrating. We are using these uh, uh, these uh, tools, okay? These lean inclusion tools that also are very synthetic and simplified tools because we are all the time using access, uh, um, cognitive principles and simplicity principles. So uh, we uh, have very port portable uh, tools. So we are using these uh, tools. Uh, on business uh, design and business uh, modeling uh, uh, within uh, the, uh, these meetups, okay, the, these physical meetups, okay. So uh, at, at, at this moment, we are using the in this context, real context, the, the tools. But uh, in coming months, I'm going to to uh, to, ex to to spread the, the use of these kind of tools to to uh, you know to other entrepreneurs uh, from Spain and from South America, okay. Okay. Deborah, you had a question? No, yeah. Um, uh, sorry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Antonio. No, please go, Deborah. No, 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 you go, Antonio. Uh, uh, can you give me, uh, provide us with an example of those projects that we can, uh, we can vis visualize some of the practical aspect of all this? Okay, uh, I know, uh, projects, local project here about uh, um, accessible tourism. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Person with disabilities uh, want to start a uh, uh, accessible hotel. Okay, okay. So uh, he, he need to collaborate with a lot of local partners. Okay, but he didn't know uh, how to start. Okay, so with these kind of tools, he was able to uh, uh, see in a clear, in a much more clear way, the partners and local, uh, you know, local resources that uh, he. Uh, 
could uh, use to uh, create a much more sustainable uh, business model. Okay, so so we are we have used business for all uh, for uh, with this purpose. Uh, another uh, another um, uh, another example. Uh, uh, a social entrepreneur that is working with uh, prostitutes and ex uh, prisoners uh, to create uh, uh, new training uh, training uh, courses for these uh, uh, kind of collectives okay that are very exclusive so uh, she want to provide uh, him with new uh, training uh, training uh, opportunities to you know to integrate them uh, within the, the society again so uh, she has uh, used this kind of methodologies to uh, introduce uh, uh, the purpose of the project and to uh, canalize the resources of the local uh, that she has uh, at the local level to, de to deliver a much more sustainable project to the, in this case, to the local administration. Okay, this is one. These are just uh, two examples, but we have uh, in close funding. If you put the hashtag Emprende Aquí. Uh, you can uh, find more than 200 projects, examples of uh, local projects that we are analyzing and we are uh, using uh, their strategies, business strategies to uh, to train uh, local entrepreneurs uh, here in Mar Menor, in Castilla-La Mancha, and in Barcelona uh, at this time. Okay. Hey. Hey, Del, I know we're almost running out of time here, but um, one thing that is interesting is, you know, business has changed so much with uh, social media and so everything yeah. we're doing, social enterprise, and the the way that businesses get funded is has changed so much as well. And I know you are using crowdfunding, but ha are there plans in the future to use more traditional uh, investors, angel investors, those types. I've seen, the reason why I'm mm -hmm. asking is, I've seen some very, very interesting models that, um, uh, for social inter, uh, on, yeah. entrepreneurs. And yeah. I'm just curious if that is on the radar yet um, or not. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Um, in, in the case of, of close funding now, we are uh, having sustainability with uh, uh, these, uh, uh, with uh, um, Training uh, courses that we are, are doing. Also, we have uh, sponsorships in uh, in different uh, close funding meetups. For instance, uh, the uh, accessible tourism uh, meetup. We are going to have uh, five sponsorship. Uh, also, we we give consultancy services about accessibility and social media for small businesses. And also, I am giving consultancy for other uh, organizations like Ponce Foundation and uh, ESA Business School. But I want to arrive to a replicable and stable and sustainable model, uh, and then uh, we uh, we are thinking about going to uh, impact investors. You know, because you, you know well that uh, okay, you know well in accessibility field as well, but that we are uh, we are uh, we have an increasing interest uh, of uh, impact investors on uh, this kind of uh, social and economical. Uh, uh, impact uh, projects. It's very important because investors uh, are um, each time more aware, uh, more aware of the important uh, importance of uh, including the social part also uh, within the business model. And uh, for this reason, uh, we have uh, uh, okay step by step. We, we are going. Uh, towards uh, mainstreaming uh, impact investors. So we are thinking about this kind of, of uh, investors when we have a, a, a replicable uh, uh, technology. But that's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Neil, uh, I think we, you can, you are, uh, can you unmute yourself? Ah. Yeah. 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 Okay. That would be that would be better. So uh, he's done so well. Um, he was uh, thinking about uh, the business tools. I, I can see in your face. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're thinking all the time. Yeah. yeah. I see you. Um, no, very interesting. 
thank you very much for, okay. for sharing okay. this with us. Um, we look forward to a stimulating chat tomorrow night on Twitter. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll close up now, but you stay on the line and we can chat afterwards. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have thank the you. That, uh, yeah. We have the feeling that we, we could almost continue for another 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 hour. Yeah. No, we have we have to today. Yeah, it okay. it will be a pleasure for me as well, and it's very nice to 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 see you face to face. It's a big pleasure. Likewise. Okay. Okay. Uh, hasta luego. Bye bye from Spain. Bye -bye. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs>